Hi, everybody. Bonjour, tout le monde. Uh, I will present the variant efficacy of Safos Vibri and the treatment regimen in a real lifetime setting at the Clinic L'Actuel. Uh, the efficacy and safety of Safos Vibri and HCV treatment regimen have been demonstrated in several, in several clinical trials. And since uh, 2014 in Quebec, we have access with the new DAA like uh, Simiprovir and Sofosbuvir. And our objectives was to evaluate the impact of Sofosbuvir regimen on treatment uh, outcome in the real life setting. It's a prospective study. Uh, inclusion criteria is all patients need to have a genotype 1A or B. Patients need to receive a soft based uh, treatment with PEG or without interferon. Uh, patients enrolled in the RCT are excluded. Uh, patient follow up or MDOT model of care, that means it's a weekly uh, consultation with a multidisciplinary team, like a nurse, a doctor, and uh, sometimes a social worker. Comparison among treatment groups were assessed by chi square, predictor of SVR uh, were determined by logistic regression analysis. Our primary outcome was uh, SVR at 12 weeks post treatment by intent to treat analysis. Uh, we have 70 patients were included in our study. Um, I'll just, okay, whoops, can I come back? Yeah, 60% of them were naive, 81% got a genotype 1A, 59% uh, were cirrhotic, and 28% uh, uh, been co-infected with uh, HIV. For the regimen, 64% got a same soft treatment, 28% got a treatment with PEG, interferon, and sofosbuvir, and 8% got a soft riba uh, combined. Among the 75 patients included in this study, 68 complete the treatment, uh, and 40 patients had sufficient uh, follow-up time available to enable us to determine the SVR. Um, our experience at Actual is that patient complete the treatment. Not a single patient was lost to follow up during the treatment, and only a small portion, uh, 5%, were lost to uh, follow up after the completing treatment. Uh, 40 patients complete the 12 weeks post treatment follow up. One patient died of a cirrhotic uh, uh, decompensated liver cirrhosis. 2% uh, fail, 12% relapse and we have 25% get cure that give us a uh, result of uh, untreatment of 68 and intent to treat 65%. Um, by regimen, the SVR was 71% with SimSoft, 50% with uh, PEG soft ribavirin and 40% with soft riba. The p-value is not significant, meaning that there is not significant difference between the HSVR rates at any regimen. However, this is probably, probably because of the small size, uh, of sim the small sample size and the lack of statistically power. Uh, over there, in the disparity in the true group, on the group that the, on the, the 40 patients, um, we got in the group of Sims of Osbury, 74% were naive and uh, soft ribavirin, uh, they have been co-infected with HIV, but that is a small number, only four patients. But I just want to put your attention on the last cirrhosis was the most of the patient. If you see in each regiment, uh, you got 74% on SimSoft, 58% with uh, soft peg riba, and soft riba it was 80%. That gave us three quarters of patient were cirrhotic on our study. Um, on the left uh, graph, we see uh, to the lack of statistical power prevents us from demonstrating a difference among baseline treatment status. It is that evident that previous treatment, treatment response has an effect on SVR. Those who felt treatments once have less of chance of recovery than patients who were treatment naive who, or, we, uh, or the relapsers. Uh, despite the lack of power and a non-significant result, the data are consistent with the result of the COSMO study, where the SBR8 was not significantly associated with the treatment in story. On the um, right side, cirrhotic patients have a recovery rate inferior to those who have a healthy liver. 
for in the presence of cirrhosis, we can see that same software much better than the software combination. Well, in the absence of uh, cirrhosis, same soft performed less well, less well, but the, set, the difference was not statistically uh, significant. Okay. Um, uh, as we've seen in the um, previous slide, being in treatment naive or experience is not uh, statistically significant, likely due to the lack of uh, power. However, when, uh, we can see uh, cirrhosis significantly uh, under its recovery. With regards to treatment, both in the univariate analysis and when controlling for confounding factors, the combination of SimSoft tends to assure a better recovery than the other regiment with soft house barrier. Does give us a conclusion. In the real life uh, setting, treatment with uh, soft house barrier offer an acceptable rate of SVR, but far less than what uh, has been reported in the ACT. Uh, the lowest VR rate is possibly due to the nature of our, our sample, which had uh, many attributes that made recovery difficult. Uh, like uh, we saw patients in our sample uh, were very um, sick, severely ill, uh, like 70% of them uh, were cirrhotic, and 42% have uh, previous treatment failed before, 30% uh, were co-infected. Nearly all patients non acute uh, achieving RSVR at initially response to the to treatment and had uh, indetectable HCV RNA at the end of the treatment, but they didn't maintain their response. The combination of SimSoft was the most effective treatment, particularly in patients who got cirrhosis. No serious effects uh, was reported in patients uh, treated with the treatment with Sofosbury. A uh, full of patients lost to follow up and an MDOT model of care with a multidisciplinary approach and close follow-up could ensure good adherence to medication and to medication and ensure that patients complete treatment because we have uh, not lost to follow-up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, do you have capacity to sequence the virus at all within your center? You had a high relapse, um, and you know, I'm, I'm just sort of wondering whether some of that, given sort of what Mark was alluding to, some of the recent data from Croy yeah. around reinfection, particularly among co-infected individuals and among people who inject drugs, the risk is about 25% uh, over five years uh, in the co-infected population in this large sort of meta-analysis. So some of the relapse might actually be reinfection. So I just think we need to be thinking about this as we're looking at patients that are relapsing in this era, mm -hmm. to be thinking about whether we yep. be looking for reinfection, at least genotyping them, again, to see if it's the same genotype or not. Yes. On the sample, we see that the relapser was very, um, after one month, that uh, I'm not sure it, because, it was because of reinfection, but... I, genotype the sample and you'll... Yeah, yeah. it was the same gen yeah. Uh, the question is to the, to, the, to the presenter and to the chairs, like, uh, what would be the differences now between the real life and the fancy look that we had from Dr. Ostrowski at the beginning? So other than, of course, the number of patients. Um, the real, can you explain a little bit like the question? I mean, the differences in the results, like, well, yeah, the, the SVR results that you had. Uh, I don't know. Life, For sure, our clinic is the is patients who are UDI a lot, most of them. Uh, in the life, is, I think for the real sitting, the patients are more ill, I think, actually. And like on the samples, it, in our study, the, we take the, the cirrhotic patient because it was the first treatment that we have, actually. And Dr. Phil. Well, I mean, I think we, this has been shown with lots of therapies, not just in this field, but in other fields, that it's hard to translate clinical trial data to real world. Mm -hmm. Clinical trials are very carefully selected patients. That's it. Um, yeah. they, there's a lot of support for them to get through treatment, to support adherence. They're fairly cherry-picked patients to some degree, so you almost always see better results in clinical trials. I mean, obviously, understanding what those reasons yeah. are and trying to improve real-life data are important. So with a discrepancy of 50%? I mean, these are small numbers, I think yeah. it's, but, uh, I, and I think there are other real world data that are a little closer to the clinical trials, but they all do show some drop off, and I think that's an area that needs to be better explored, but it's probably multifactorial. 
Thank you. Maybe in one final question before we close the session. Just a quick question. I was yes. wondering how, what method or what it is that you use to define the patient that has cirrhosis. Like, how did you reach that decision? Did, were you able to use uh, fiber scan or did you use lab work? Uh, no, uh, we, we make a fiber scan. And you know, some this kind of people have been try other treatment with peg riba, for example. And it, in the last, when we, the DDA arrived, we decide to waiting for for the new treatment because we know that in January 2014 we can have access for that and we decide to put for, in Quebec uh, the accept uh, on the first uh, when the, the new treatment arrive the government the pharma committee of pharmacology accept to treat the cirrhotic before the uh, because we have access to the treatment for F0F, uh, uh, F0F1 in Quebec but we decide to put the to start uh, the treatment on this kind of people. How much is it? We have a fiber scan on the clinic. Ah, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, did you? Decide? <laughs> How did you decide? <laughs> we have a fiber scan on the you. clinic. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Thank you. <laughs>